Hey, it's Marilla Minnelli, and today I'm gonna show you how to achieve this toffee brunette shade using all Kenra color. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now before we get started, I went ahead and spoke to my model today about what she's really wanting. Now it's been about four months since she's had her hair color done and, and it's grown out really beautifully. We got this gorgeous blonde canvas to work with, but since we're going into fall and winter, we're ready to make a little bit of a transition. But I wanna take her to a brunette shade so it's not so shocking for her. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add in just a few low lights just to break up some of the blonde that she has, but I'm really loving this money piece that she has here. And then once her low lights are processed, we're gonna go in with a color melt shade, so that way we can blend a line of demarcation and also add in a rich, warm auburn shade for deposit. So I'm really loving her money piece that she has here, so I'm gonna isolate that out. I don't even wanna add any low light to that or touch it at all, but what I do want to do is break up some of this blonde that she has on the top. So you can see for the rest of the hair, we only need to add in those low lights for this top section because she has a lot of depth going on underneath. So there's really no need for that low light right here. We're just more focused on where she has most of that global blonding right towards the top. So we're gonna kind of mimic the same type of placement that she has. So that way we can get a little bit more of a balanced shade throughout. For her low light, I'm gonna be using 7B at a one-to-one -one mixing ratio with nine volume developer. Now the reason why I chose 7B is because you can see her natural on the underside is a little bit darker than what's going on on top. So when I looked at this level here, I wanted a color that was gonna come close to the depth, but not going super dark. So that's why I decided to go with seven, just a, a shade lighter than her virgin hair. Now for the suctioning, I kept her down the middle and then from ear to ear. And I wanna mimic what she had placement wise with her highlights. So I can see we got kind of a traditional mohawk suction going on here. So I'm gonna go in horizontally in the back to go ahead and break up some of this blonde. So I'm gonna go in with a slice and then I'm gonna use my weaving comb to do the weaving for me. This is just gonna evenly distribute a lot of the low lights that I wanna put in, and then also break up evenly a lot of the blonde that we have here. For her low light, I'm gonna be using Kenra Demi Permanent 7B out of one to one mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And I'm gonna take my low light formula and put it right on top of that blonde and then just stroke it up. I'm not really concerned about taking it all the way to the root because we are gonna be doing a color melt layer. So the whole goal of this is to deepen some of this blonde and break up that line of demarcation. And then we're just gonna to continue to move on up throughout this back section in horizontal placement. Each of my sections are about a quarter inch wide. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want a little bit more of an organic feel to these low lights I'm putting in. I want them coming from different places. So you can even see like when you have a deeper section, we're gonna have a lot of these little dropouts here and that's literally what I want. It's kind of creating that teasy light without the tease. This is a really good section here an example of what exactly I'm trying to break up. You can see there's like a pretty distinct line of demarcation. So that's what these highlights are gonna do. It's gonna break that up for me. But my goal is to not get rid of all of the blonde because that's also what's gonna give us the dimension in that auburn shade that we're gonna create a little later. Now, just like applying highlights with lightener, you do wanna make sure that this is thoroughly saturated, so I still use a lot of the same techniques as far as pushing the hair side to side and up and down to make sure that I'm getting both sides and all sides of the hair. So that way we have an even deposit. So I'm only gonna add in a couple more foils here, making a total of five in the back. And now I'm gonna move on to the front. 
For these side sections, I have her split down the middle and I'm gonna be working horizontally on the side. So the reason for this is it's gonna give me that blanket effect still mimicking her original position and placement of her blonde highlights. I'm gonna start right under that parietal ridge. The other reason too why I'm mimicking or want to mimic her placement is because I really love how her hair grew out and I already love how it just looks in general. So that's why I wanna to continue to mimic that. It's just all over breaking up some of the blonde. Each of my subsections are about half an inch to three quarters wide. So depending on how much dimension you wanna add in, that part's pretty versatile. So obviously the more low lights you put in, the more dark and depth you're gonna add. What I love about this technique is it's really natural and I also feel really confident that it's not gonna be such a shocking transition from this blonde into what she's gonna be perceived to be a brunette shade. So when we go in with her final gloss, we're gonna be using level seven and a little bit of level eight. And even though that's still in the blonde family, to my client, it's gonna feel like she's definitely a brunette. So it's really important to know that you shouldn't always go from one extreme level to the other. Usually taking your blondes gradually darker is typically the best way to go. That way, if you know they really wanna kind of transition back to blonde eventually, it's not gonna be such a difficult task for you and a long journey for them. For this technique, I'm just gonna do about four to five foils on each side. So you can see this technique is pretty quick. Now for my low light formula, I decided to go in with a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. Now the reason why I chose the one-to-one -to, -one to my nine volume developer is because it's gonna give me the maximum amount of saturation. So that's typically why I like using that mixing ratio for my low light formula. So if you want something that's more medium to sheer coverage, then I definitely would go in with a one to two mixing ratio. The other thing that I like about the Demi Permanent Shades is I already know that I'm going to process this for the full time of 20 to 25 minutes. So I want that maximum deposit and it's non-progressive. So if I were to just leave it on a little longer for some reason, if I'm doing you know, more blonding or other projects outside of the low lights, it's not gonna continue to get darker and darker and darker. So that's one of the things that I love about the Demi Permanent line. I'm gonna continue on with the same technique on the other side until we have all of her foils placed. So as a reminder, I left her money piece out because I'm really loving the placement and how the blonde looks, but I just want to enhance it with her final color melt toner. So that's why we're just gonna let it process for 20 minutes and I'll see you back. Now that her foils are done, I'm shampooing her with Kenra Platinum Color Charge Shampoo. What I love about the shampoo is it is color protecting and it's gonna help prevent color fading, which is perfect for any blonde that's transitioning from a light blonde to a darker shade. Now that she's freshly shampooed, I'm gonna be using Pearl Detangler to detangle her hair, because we're not using any conditioner. I need something to add a little bit of slip so that way we can detangle those TZ lights without the T's that we added in, and then prepper for the color melt formula. I really like Pearl Detangler because it's lightweight and it's not gonna disrupt what I'm trying to do for my final toner color. So you can see how much blend we got with those low lights we added in and how that money piece just really pops and still maintaining a lot of depth back here. So now what I wanna do to prep her for the color melt formula is I'm gonna isolate out that money piece again because that's gonna be the last section that we add our color so that way we can make sure that it is the brightest piece still in her overall look.
For her color melt formula, I'm gonna be using 7BC at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And then I'm gonna blend that right into 7BC equal parts with 8GB, one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And how I'm gonna get started is by doing vertical sections in the back. And I'm gonna be dragging this color right on down to where that highlight line is. Now for this demi-permanent formula, I am doing one to two. So the one to two isn't as much saturation as the one to one that we added for her low lights. And I'm gonna be working in vertical sections throughout. Just dragging this down. I'm doing the vertical sections because we're gonna have a much softer line of demarcation when it comes to how the blend is gonna appear. If I were to work in horizontal sections, we're definitely gonna see a, a little bit more of a line of demarcation of that graduation of color. Now she does have some highlights on this hairline here. So you, you know, each client's gonna be a little bit different on your highlight placement. So just make sure that you're paying attention to exactly where those highlights are at because you want to make sure you're crossing that line when creating the depth. And what I'm doing here in the back is dragging it down a little bit further. So each person's gonna be a little bit different, whether you're doing a tap, a shadow, or you're dragging your color melt down a little further. For this back section, I do wanna bring this down a little farther. And what we're gonna do with that money piece is we're not gonna bring it down as far. And then once I have this on, this is where I'm gonna start combing this down. The other thing that I wanna note is that this color melt formula that we're adding in is the same level as our low light formula. So you can see the similarity in the dimension that we're creating on the bottom part of our canvas. So if you wanted something a little bit more dramatic, you would probably wanna go in with a darker low light shade. So I'm just making sure to evenly comb down my color melt formula and drag it down just a little bit. And once I have that done, this should take you about five minutes for the back. And now I'm gonna move on to the front. So for my front sections, I'm just gonna mimic her partings that I already created. It's just gonna make it a lot more easier for me to apply. And then I also wanna make sure it's like away from her face. We're gonna take it right where that highlight line is. I'm not gonna really cross it too much because I want to take advantage of the amount of blonde she has and create the amount of impact we want with our mids to end color. This technique is also perfect for someone who just kind of wants to take a little break from doing bleach highlights. I know sometimes when our blonde clients are having a little bit too much fun over the summer, going in the pool, the beach, and they have a lot of lightning services, sometimes they just need a little bit of a break. And doing a demi-permanent service like this is like the perfect solution. Now, once I get this on her root area, I'm gonna let this process for just five minutes and then I'm gonna apply my mids to end formula. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I want a little bit more deposit on the root versus the ends. Now that it's been five minutes, I went ahead and dragged down my color just a little bit more. And now I'm gonna take horizontal sections all the way up using my mid to end formula. And I'm just gonna paint it right on top of that line, creating my third shade, essentially. So I have my 7BC into my 8GB with 7BC. Now traditionally when I'm doing a toner formula, I do like to apply it at the bowl, but because we're doing a more detailed color melt application, I typically like to bring my clients back to the chair. It just gives me more control on exactly where I'm placing that mids to end color. I'm also making sure that when I'm doing my application of my color melt, that it's all facing away from the face. This is just gonna be so much more comfortable for your client 
so that the color is not hanging right in their face. Doing your color melt formula at the chair is also the best way to ensure that you have the right amount of saturation on every single section. Now that I have the back done, I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes and then I'm gonna apply it to this front two pieces for her money piece and then process her for an additional five minutes and we're gonna get ready to shampoo and condition her. So now it's been five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my mid to end formula to her money piece. Just something to note is that when you're doing this, it's really important to remember to apply it right on top of that highlight line. That's what's gonna create that blend and that third color. Now that it's been five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and shampoo her again with Color Charge Shampoo. And then I'm gonna finish off with Color Charge Conditioner to lock in this fresh color we just put in. To prep her hair, I'm gonna be using blow dry spray. I love blow dry spray to prep with just because it has the argon oil and the evaporative silicone, so it's gonna help speed up my blow dry time. But it also has a lot of shine and hydration to the hair as well. Next, I'm gonna be using Kenra Platinum Thickening Mousse. And I love this mousse just because it has a nice hold, but it actually thickens up each of the hair strands. And I really like working that right into the root area so we can get a lot of volume. I'm just gonna evenly distribute my product and then we're gonna dry her so she's about 80, 90% dry. And then go in with a round brush. Now that she's all dry, I'm gonna add in some curls using my one and a half inch curling iron. I'm making sure to curl everything away from the face. If you wanted a little bit more texture, then I definitely would alternate your curls, but I'm looking for something a little bit more polished. To finish off her style, I'm gonna be using Kenra Platinum Dry Texture Spray. This is the perfect product for somebody who has really fine, silky hair and just needs a little bit of extra volume. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair video and if you did and you wanna watch more, make sure to check out our other tutorials right here on this channel. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend and I will see you in the next video.